What's happening, you mellifluous primates? Trumpeter Bobby Spellman here to welcome you to another euphonic episode of... Trumpet with Bob! The trumpet is well known throughout the world for its wide range of beautiful tonal colors. From the bright, triumphant sound of a brass fanfare to the whisper quiet, subtle nuance of a jazz ballad, the trumpet is an unmistakable sound, and that beautiful tone is often what draws people to the instrument. In fact, I'm sure that one of the things that inspired you to pick up the trumpet in the first place was that beautiful sound of the instrument. Now, if you've just started out playing the trumpet, or if you've been playing for a while, you might find it at times difficult to wrestle the ideal trumpet sound from your instrument. Especially right beginning, it can be very frustrating to have an ideal trumpet sound in your head, to have that sound that you're looking for, and to be unable to bring it out of the trumpet the way that you want. So today, I wanted to talk about some of my tips and tricks for getting a beautiful tone on the instrument and a couple of exercises that I do to maintain and improve my tone. I think they might be helpful in your quest for a beautiful tone across all registers of the instrument and in all different styles. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, my first tip for getting a beautiful tone on the trumpet is to avoid over buzzing or tightening your lips too much to get a buzz. Now, I've made an entire video on this you can check out called Don't Over Buzz, uh, but I'll get into a little bit of the specifics of that right here, and you can check out that video later for a little bit more information on that. Now, the position of your aperture, which is the space in your lips through which the air moves, will have an impact on the sound of your tone. So, if you are tightening your lips too much to get a buzz, you may find that you're reducing your aperture quite a lot and you're squashing your tone and taking out some of the more brilliant sounds and overtones that you can get out of the instrument. Now, if you open your aperture too much, you may also find that you get a lot of air in your sound, and that may not be what you're looking for either, and it may be difficult in that circumstance to be able to play into the upper register and do certain things that you need to on the trumpet. So let me give you a little demonstration. If I'm just playing a regular old middle G, as I normally would, it would sound like this. If I'm focusing too much on the buzz and I'm squashing my lips together in order to get that buzz, I'm gonna get a sound that's a little bit more like this. It's also gonna make it much harder for me to play in the lower register. Similarly, if I open my aperture too much, I'm gonna get a sound a little bit more like this. There's a middle ground sweet spot where you can get your tone right where you want it, where it's gonna be able to be useful in all the different registers. Now, the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to focus less on the buzz and more on blowing air freely through your lips into the mouthpiece. I've explained this a little bit more on my Don't Over Buzz video, but one thing that I can do is, instead of thinking about buzzing into the mouthpiece, what I will think about instead is just blowing air into the mouthpiece and letting the pressure from the trumpet cause my lips to vibrate. So that's gonna sound a little bit more like this. I'm not really buzzing into the mouthpiece, I'm just letting my air go through my lips into the mouthpiece and with the rest of the trumpet attached, now I'm gonna get caught into a feedback loop with the standing wave in the inside of the trumpet, which is going to enable me to get that tone without having to work too hard, without trying to over buzz. On the similar note, you just wanna make sure that your lips are not so far apart that you're getting a little bit of too much of an airy sound, although that can be used in certain circumstances for a little timbral effect. Over-tightening is the biggest problem that I see with beginning trumpet players, and it can be a real detriment to getting a really warm, beautiful sound on the instrument. So if you're finding that you just started out and you're really not getting the sound you're looking for, it very well may be that you're just spending too much focus and too much energy on the buzz itself, on tightening down on your lips, and you need to just stay relaxed and be able to blow that air through your lips in order to get a nicer tone. Now that brings me to my next tip, which is a theme of mine lately, and I think it's very important in playing the trumpet, and that is to stay relaxed. Once again, if you're tightening out too much, if you're trying to squeeze these notes out, you may find that you're getting a little bit more resistance than you want, and you're not getting the tone that you need to get out of the trumpet in order to replicate that beautiful sound in your mind. So, staying relaxed is very important, 
while you're playing, you want to engage the muscles in your face so that everything is in its right place. But after that, the goal is to let your lips freely buzz. The more relaxed your lips can be and the more they can freely buzz, the more of a nice tone you're going to get on the instrument. All right, and my third tip for getting a nice tone on the instrument is gonna have a lot to do with some of these exercises that follow, and that is to make sure that you're allowing your lips to find that sweet spot on the mouthpiece where they're able to resonate freely and you're able to get a nice sound on the instrument. If your intonation isn't quite right or you're not finding the center of the mouthpiece with your face, you can find that your tone is diminished substantially because you're working against the trumpet. You always wanna be working with the instrument in order to find that sweet spot where the whole instrument is gonna resonate and you're gonna get all the beautiful overtones from the horn. So I'm gonna give you an example of where I'm gonna be a little bit out of tune or I'm not gonna be centered in the mouthpiece and then I'm gonna bring myself back to center so that you can hear the difference in tone from when I'm off to when I'm right on the middle of that pitch. And that sounds like this. Once again, a little demonstration here. You can hear I'm not in the center of the pitch, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, and so you're getting a much fuzzier sound. It's not locking into the, uh, p the natural pitch of the instrument, and you're getting, it's a very dull sound. But as I land back in the center of that pitch and my intonation improves, and I'm really blowing air through the trumpet, it's gonna allow all those beautiful overtones to resonate from the horn. All right, with that, let's talk about a couple of exercises you can do to improve your tone on the trumpet. The first thing that I like to do, and I do this every morning and I recommend it, is long tones. Long tones are a huge help in developing your tone uh, because it'll give your lips the opportunity to do something repetitiously for quite a long time and to really get uh, into that specific place where the horn is gonna resonate. So I always recommend that everybody start their day off with long tones. You could do five, 10, 15, 20 minutes of long tones, however long you wanna do it. Um, and it's the kind of thing that you can focus on or you can distract yourself watching uh, some kind of educational programming or something like that while you sit around and do these long tones. But either way, the goal here is to spend time allowing your lips to find the center of the pitch, to find the center of the mouthpiece, the sweet spot on the mouthpiece where it's gonna resonate and to allow that repetitious behavior to make subconscious the feeling of playing in such a way that you're gonna get a beautiful tone on the instrument. So you can check out my other video on my technique for long tones, for a little bit more on long tones, but the basic gist of it goes like this. All right, gang, this video is getting a little long and uh, long tones are tedious. So if you wanna check out more on this, check out my other video. We're gonna just fast forward through this part. Here we go. When you start playing in the morning, you wanna just first start with a breath attack. Don't bother tonguing, but allow your breath to push your lips into the position on the mouthpiece where it's gonna really resonate where you're finding that sweet spot. From there, you wanna just hold whatever note is comfortable for you. Usually I recommend a low C or a G above that. Uh, once you've got that note happening, then you're just hanging out there. You wanna be maybe a mezzo piano or a piano. You don't wanna be playing too loud. You just wanna let your lips find the center of that pitch and really try to hone in on getting that nice tone as you go. Another thing you want to focus on while you're doing long tones is to make sure that you're breathing consistently, that your breath is consistent in such a way that you're not getting a lot of wavering in your tone or a lot of discrepancy in the pitch. A consistent tone is also going to help a lot in getting those beautiful overtones out of the instrument. All right, the second exercise I recommend to my students in helping to build a beautiful tone is to really work on playing in the lower register of the instrument. So if you notice that you're getting a dull tone in, the, in your middle range and you're having a very difficult time playing all the way down to the low F sharp under low C, uh, that may be the issue. It may be that you want to spend a little bit more time playing those low notes. Now, there's no way to play in the low register of the instrument with a good tone unless your aperture is such that it will allow your lips to freely vibrate. So this is a good, not only a good exercise to do, but also sort of a good test to make sure that you're where you need to be in terms of uh, producing a tone on the instrument and staying relaxed and letting your lips vibrate. Now, as you continue to practice notes in that lower register, and as your tone in the lower register improves, you will find your tone in all the registers will also improve. So there's a couple of exercises that I like to do to be able to work out hanging out in that low register. Um, in particular, the H.L. Clark Technical Studies for Cornet book once again comes to the rescue on this one. The very first exercise has to do with playing from low F sharp up to C chromatically, and it sounds a little something like this. If you're finding that it's difficult to start on low F sharp, you can start on C and work backwards, work down chromatically to F sharp, and that will sound like this. 
The goal is just to stay relaxed and to be able to move back and forth from the low C down to the low F sharp. If you're struggling to get the low F sharp, just go down as low as you can. Go down to an A or an A flat or a G, whatever it happens to be where you can try to get a nice tone and really spend some time there. Just try to, you know, stay relaxed and just try to play some music in that register in order to allow your lips to freely vibrate and to try to get a nice tone on the instrument. Another great exercise in this realm is the second exercise in the Clark book, the second study, uh, which is very famous, of course, and you can do the lower register exercises in that particular portion. Uh, so I like to start on G, which is the lowest one. That's number 27 in the H.L. Clark Technical Studies for Cornet book, and that sounds like this. And you may choose to tongue that or slur it at your free discretion, uh, but being able to play in that lower register will allow your lips to freely vibrate and will give you a better tone in all of the registers. All right, finally, my third exercise for improving your tone is lip bends. Now, there may be another better term for this, but I know it is lip bends, and we'll get the point across. The idea is that you are starting off from a particular pitch, and then you bend the note out of that pitch down a half step or a whole step uh, using your tongue and the inside of your mouth, your air, et cetera, et cetera. And then you move that pitch back to the center of the pitch. And that is going to sound like this. Now, the value of this exercise is it enables you to leave that sweet spot on the mouthpiece where the horn is ringing, and as you return to that spot, you can hear the horn return to that full, beautiful tone that you want on the instrument. So once again, I'll do it. You'll hear me duck out of that sweet spot on the instrument and go into sort of a dull, fuzzy kind of tone outside of the central pitch that I'm looking for, and as I return to the pitch where the horn is really gonna resonate, you'll hear all the overtones come back and you'll hear the sound improve. Check it out, here we go. Working on those kinds of exercises will enable you to reinforce that specific place where your lips wanna be in order to get the best sound that you can out of the trumpet. Now, there's a couple of ways to practice these lip bends. The first way that I like to practice lip bends is in sort of an isolated circumstance. And what I like to do is play the note and then use the fingers, my uh, valves here, to bring the note down a half step first so that I can hear what that pitch sounds like, and then I will use only my face to try to bring those that note down to where the pitch was on the instrument. So, I'm gonna give you a little example. It sounds like this. My recommendation is that you start that exercise on low C. That's the easiest place to start is on low C, and then as you go, you can bring it up to G and even the middle C above that. Uh, also, when you start off with that exercise, you wanna start with a half step because that's gonna be the easiest interval to do. But as you go, you can then move down to a whole step. So starting on low C, I'll now go down to a B flat with the fingering, and then I will use only my air and my tongue and my face to move that down to that B flat again. And that sounds like this. And the value of getting the note on the trumpet with the fingerings first is just to get the sound of that pitch in your head so that as you're bending the note down, you're able to find that specific pitch. Then as you move up, your face will find that sweet spot, that correct pitch in which the, your lips are locked into the natural harmonic series of the instrument and you're gonna get a really nice tone. There's another variation on this particular exercise that was taught to me by the great Laurie Frink. 
and uh, that has to do with using the six notes at the beginning of the Carmine Caruso book and incorporating these lip bends into that exercise. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of that. This will be very tedious, but it sounds a little something like this. and so on. Where you put the bend is up to you. You will find this in the variations on the sort of preliminary exercise from the Flexus book by Laurie Frank and John McNeil. Uh, they cover that. Where you put that bend is kind of up to you. Uh, Laurie Frank had me put it in a particular place and it, there, it's in the book in different places. So where you put the bend is up to you, but the principle remains the same, and it will be a very helpful exercise, especially if it's something that you do daily, in maintaining that tone and trying to get a beautiful sound out of the instrument. All right, gang, well, there you have it. A couple of tips and tricks and techniques and exercises for developing and maintaining a beautiful tone on the trumpet. And with that, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Wait, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Cut the end theme. Seems I've forgotten something. And it's something that some of you may be interested in, so I'll touch on it. But I will admit that I forgot about it because it's the least important part of all of this tone business. And that is equipment. So equipment is important in subtly affecting the tone of the uh, instrument that you're playing. But of course, the foundational uh, elements of playing the trumpet, the physical components of it, and just doing the exercises and the long tones, various things like that are vastly more important than equipment, but I'll talk a little bit about how to do that. So, you want to get a trumpet that you like, different trumpets have different tones, you got to go to a place and try out different trumpets, uh, see what speaks to you. Uh, you can also change your mouthpiece to get a very substantially uh, different tone, all things considered, although once again, on trumpet, our tone has more to do with our lips and the way that we play the instrument by far than the equipment itself. But I would say between the trumpet and the mouthpiece, you're probably going to get more of a tonal shift from the mouthpiece than you are the trumpet. Um, a bigger, deeper mouthpiece is in theory going to give you a darker sound, and a more shallow mouthpiece is going to give you a, a little bit more of a bright tone. So if you find that your tone is a little too dark, you may try a shallower mouthpiece. If you're finding that it's a little too bright, you may try a deeper mouthpiece. Uh, and there's going to be some experimentation to do with that to see what works for you, how to balance the tone that you're looking for, and the uh, facility of playing in different registers on the instrument, etc., etc. I want to do a little demonstration on the difference in tone. Uh, this is my trumpet. It is a 1945 to 46 Martin Committee. It would have been the same thing that Miles Davis and Dizzy Gillespie played. I'm also playing on an Austin, Austin Custom Brass. Uh, Custom Reserve TA1 mouthpiece. I love this mouthpiece. I love this trumpet. This is the sound that I'm looking for, and it sounds a little something like this. Now, I'm going to take this, which is the cheapest student trumpet I have in my collection of trumpets. I have this hanging around for a student, any student of mine who needs a trumpet at some point. It's going to work, but it's the cheapest student trumpet I have, and I'm going to pair it with a no-name 7C regular old tiny mouthpiece, and that is going to sound something like this. So you can see that I may get a slightly better tone or I may have a little bit more efficiency with the setup that I really like, but at the end of the day, your trumpet tone has a lot more to do with the way that you play the instrument than what instrument or equipment you're playing. So you always want to maintain those exercises, really think about finding the center of that pitch, stay relaxed, allow your lips to resonate freely on the mouthpiece, and you will find quickly that you will gain a wonderful tone, and then you can use the equipment to subtly shape that tone in a way that most fits the ideal trumpet tone that you have in your mind. All right, gang, that's all I have for today on 
Trumpet Tone, I hope this video helped in your quest for musical excellence. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, it's a big help to us. And we'll be putting out some new videos on trumpet stuff and in the near future, improvisation and composition and various things of that nature. All right, happy practicing, gang. See ya. Trumpet with Bob. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it helps in your pursuit of the majesty of musical self-expression. If you like what we're doing here, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Big thanks to all the new subscribers. We really appreciate your support, and we're going to keep putting out some new videos for you. The Ridgewood School of Music is now accepting new students for lessons online as well as in person in the Brooklyn, Queens, and greater New York City area. You can find us on our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com and you can send us a message and we would love to help you achieve all of your musical dreams. For some more musical fun, you can also follow me, Bobby Spellman, on Instagram at Bob Spellman or in any of the other social media platforms listed in the description below. Thanks again for checking out this video. Happy practicing, and we'll catch you next time.